Today on Real Life, going barefoot for the least of these. Dr. Jeff Brodsky shares his remarkable story about fighting against child sex trafficking. On Miracles in American History, William Federer explains how God intervened during General Washington's historic winter at Valley Forge. And Katie Farrell is making a dashing dish worthy to bring to your next Christmas party. That's today on Real Life. Well, this is Real Life. Welcome. And we want to just believe for a real, joyful life, this season of joy, guys. I'm yes. Tom Hollis. I'm here with uh, Pastor Amy Schaefer and Amanda Brocker. Hey, and, you know, it, it is that, that season. It's a season of joy, and we want to see the, the, the joy of the Lord be yours today. And we know that, you know, many times that's a, that, that could be a struggle. But we're here today to believe for that for you. Okay, how do they explain joy, right? Jesus first, other second, yourself last. And that really does bring to, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Make life more about him and less about you. And then you're going to find right. real joy. Because, you know, so many things happen that kind of steal your joy. Right. And that take the joy away. But Christ always brings life. I know one thing that really can bring joy at Christmas time is when we receive those Christmas cards and some of us work really hard. You know, my family, I haven't done Christmas cards in a while. It's horrible, but yeah. let me tell you the importance and the value that you feel when you receive those cards. And I know for like my mother-in-law right now, she's been going through some trials and that with her health and she's in a nursing home rehabilitating, you have no idea how much those cards mean. So write those cards out and send cards, but you have something yeah. to tell us about this I card. I love the family Christmas cards. I like getting them in the mail. I love seeing all my friends and family and what their minute, family look like now you what know you mean with the pictures the picture yeah. cards you love those not just like a normal <laughs> card okay like a picture card there's a difference okay okay so okay so we took my family to do our Christmas <laughs> pictures right downtown yeah. Pittsburgh a freezing cold day and I found out that my family talks all the time. The photographer <laughs> said, if I get one out of 20 of these pictures, I will be amazed because your family talks so much. <laughs> and I said, thank you. I'm so proud of that. We were supposed to be in these really chill, like discreet areas, like Schaefer's were going in, like don't make such a big ruckus. And we did the complete opposite every where we where, went. Where do they take you? What, what's like the background? What are they, where are you? I cannot tell you. You oh, will have to get a Christmas discreet. card. Okay, <laughs> well. See, that's <laughs> right. I will find a different place in downtown Pittsburgh every year till I breathe my last breath. Great, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> if you Yay. see the Schaefer family in your neighborhood, you'll know what's going on. But do you do a Christmas pick? Yeah, no, we've never Why? done that. We, we just don't do uh. it. Uh, but I love Christmas cards, though. I love getting Christmas cards. Right. I love, you know, going, uh, seeing all the different, uh, you know, Christmas. The thing about Christmas cards, I noticed, though, is if you stop sending them, yeah. you stop getting them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, if you don't, if you don't send them, you know, there were there are people. I know you've got these people on your Christmas list that you haven't talked to since last Christmas. When the last right. time you had any kind of communication was when you sent last yeah. year's Christmas card, right? right? Yeah. And, and we we noticed that too. But you know what? It's still fun to get. I know, and I save them. And my husband is not happy. I I have them filed by year, and I save them so I can go back and look. Well, did, did you, I, I, you know, that's, I can understand that. I actually, for a long time, Am I kept. Am I a hoarder? <laughs> I might need prayer. I might need to call 1-888-665-4483. Be delivered. Um, but, you know, I love looking at old Christmas cards, too. If you yeah. see some of the old ones, the, the ones from the right. 50s or 40s, they're really awesome. Yes, right. You know, well, it's interesting that you mentioned JOY and yeah. mentioned that acronym because our guest uh, today on the show, Dr. Jeff Brodsky, his uh, organization is called JOY international and that is exactly why it's called joy international jesus others and yourself yeah. um, but he is taking a stand against child trafficking wow. and it's such a serious uh problem and serious subject but he will bring the joy of the lord as he talks about that that's right well speaking about being barefoot let me tell you, you all are going to want to stay tuned for the miracle in american history with george washington this is winter at valley forge and these men were barefoot 
That's and right. oftentimes they left trails of blood because it was so cold outside. Wow. Stay wow. tuned. Right. Wow. Okay, and we have our dear friend Katie Farrell who is going to be whipping up a special dish, skinny deviled eggs. Is there such a thing? We will find out. That's going to be great. <laughs> you know, with, with all the, the joy and the things that we talk about during this, this season, it, it's difficult to think about going through trials. And, and uh, as you are, you know, as you come upon this season, uh, it, is, it is a time where peop many people struggle. They struggle with mm -hmm. the, the whole issue of Christmas. And we have prayer partners standing by. There's a number there on your screen. They're always there to pray with you. We'd love for you to call in because we want to bring some joy into that situation. And we want to believe with you for, for great joy in this, this season of joy, uh, getting, just getting our lives uh, closer to God. That's right. And yeah. you know what? We love our Christmas songs, but I've had a song stuck in my head, and it's that song, Cornerstone. And there's a part of the one verse that says, Faultless, I stand before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. How amazing is that because of this gift that the Lord brought to us? Now we can stand faultless before his throne. Mm. What an amazing thing that means to us. I wonder how many people right now are, are waking up in the morning with the weight of guilt and shame and they feel like God is out to condemn them, that he's up there with a hammer when you get out of bed and he's like, boom, and, and you just feel so guilty for past failures, past mistakes, maybe situations that happened to you. But Jesus didn't come to this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's right. That's right. One of my favorites is uh, God rest you merry gentlemen. And it yeah. says in there that he, that, that, God rest you, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save the world from Satan's power yes. when we had gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Thank you, yes. Thank you Lord, for not making me sing it. But the, the, uh, it, is, it is something that we need to remember that that, that is why we're here. That is why that, that, that uh, we exist. That's why Jesus came, to save us from Satan's power and to set us yes. free. And Amen. he brings us comfort and joy. And we're praying that this Christmas season, you will have comfort in your home. You'll have the joy of the Lord in your house. And coming up on this Miracles in American History, William Federer explains how God intervened during Valley Forge. Let's take a look. Did you know this miracle in American history? After the American victory at Saratoga, where 6,000 British troops surrendered, British General Howe struck back by driving the Patriots out of Philadelphia. While 11,000 Americans died on British starving ships, where the British would capture the Americans and stick them on ships where they would starve to death, there were 11,000 American troops that set up camp on December 19th, 1777 at Valley Forge, just 25 miles from Philadelphia. Soldiers were from every state in the new union. Ages went from 12 to 60 year old. There were whites, African Americans, and even American Indians. Over 2,500 died at Valley Forge that terrible winter. It was a rate of 12 per day, dying from freezing, exposure, hunger, and disease. A committee from Congress reported feet froze and legs froze till they became black and it was often necessary to amputate them. Lutheran pastor Henry Mullenberg, whose sons Peter and Frederick were in the first U.S. Congress, wrote in his Notebook of a Colonial Clergyman. I heard a fine example today, namely that His Excellency General Washington rode around among his army yesterday and admonished each and every one to fear God, to put away wickedness, and to practice the Christian virtues. God has marvelously preserved him from harm in the midst of countless perils, ambuscades, and fatigues. On December 24th of 1983, President Ronald Reagan stated in a radio address, the image of George Washington kneeling in prayer in the snow is one of the most famous in American history. The story of George Washington kneeling and praying during the terrible winter at Valley Forge. 
Hessian Major Karl Leopold Barmeister noted the only thing that kept the American Army from disintegrating was their spirit of liberty. In February, the spring of 1778, Prussian officer Baron von Steuben arrived to train and drill the American volunteers, transforming them into an army. On April 21st of 1778, Washington wrote to Lieutenant Colonel John Bannister, no history can furnish an instance of an army suffering such uncommon hardships as ours has done and bearing them with the same patience and fortitude. To see men without clothes to cover their nakedness, without blankets to lay on, without shoes by which their marches might be traced by the blood from their feet, and almost as often without provisions, marching through snow and frost, and at Christmas, taking up their winter quarters within a day's march of the enemy, without a house or hut to cover them, and submitting to it without a murmur, is a mark of patience and obedience, which, in my opinion, can scarce be paralleled. Successfully keeping the army intact through the devastating winter and Baron von Steuben training them into an army, Washington issued the order from Valley Forge, April 12, 1778. The Honorable Congress, having thought proper to recommend to the United States of America to set apart Wednesday, the 22nd instant, to be observed as a day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer, that at one time, and with one voice, the righteous dispensations of providence may be acknowledged and his goodness and mercy towards our army supplicated and implored. The general directs that the day shall be most religiously observed in the army and that no work shall be done thereon and that the several chaplains do prepare discourses. On May 2nd, 1778, Washington ordered the commander in chief directs that divine service be performed every Sunday to the distinguished character of patriot. It should be our highest glory to laud the more distinguished character of Christian. An amazing story of faith in times of crises. America is unique in world history and it's important for us to remember these miracles in American history. You know, when we hear these miracles in American history, it just always amazes me, you know, guys, to think of uh, General Washington going around on horseback, imploring them to, to uh, you know, to, to hear God. Put away wickedness. Put away wickedness. And practice Christian principles. Uh, I mean, it, it worked. Just, it really did work. But it was interesting because, I mean, that kind of leadership it was, mm -hmm. was in him. But also the character of freedom. He, they said that the yeah, principles the spirit, of freedom were liberty, inside. Yes. They were, and, and that, the, that they needed to have that in order to, I mean, think about it. Roughing it through the winter like that, 11,000 troops. Barefoot. Barefoot. And, and their legs blankets. even turning black. Yes. I, I was really disturbed about the, the British ships taking our people and putting them in ships and starving them to death. Starving. Starve, I mean, that's... A, another level of crazy evil. Mm -hmm. And I just think, wow, for these men to push through and to see the victory and, mm -hmm. and then to say, we're going to pray and we're going to believe God. We're going to trust God. Right. And I don't know, to watch the leadership of George Washington, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know, as I've studied some of the great revivals that happened, you know, the second great awakening, first great awakening, if those things didn't happen, there wouldn't have been the character. Yeah. That's wow. many, many clergymen have said that the character of the nation was founded in those revivals happening mm -hmm. and, and, and enabled people to then go beyond what they normally could because they knew that God was in it. God was right. doing something here. God was, the, was moving them to a place of freedom. So I wonder like what can we take today and apply from this story to develop character for even maybe future or upcoming revivals that are going to be happening? Well, I think in our <laughs> history, number one, like as young people, we need to be so thankful for our freedom because there was a price that was paid. We weren't around to see this, but to recognize that. And that spirit of liberty, I think a lot of cases in our lives, it's mind over matter. We have got to renew our mind so that we don't get caught up in the funk that we might be in or the struggle because God wants to take you over, but that renewing of the mind 
you have to do it. That spirit of liberty, mm -hmm. we're going to persevere. Well, I, I, and I think that learning history matters a lot mm -hmm. to us. And we, a lot of times we don't want to learn history. Everybody who sat in history class and had to memorize dates and battles and things like that, you didn't want to do that. But when we find out what the, the foundation and the character was of our nation, it is a challenge for us to be those same people. You know, that when we were, when we hear about people that did that, just like you said, Amanda, when we hear about people that because of the cause of liberty, because of the freedom that enables us to sit right here, right now. And use our voices. And use our voices to talk about our faith in Christ. Those things were founded by those people that went through Valley Forge. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. That's and, and, I mean, and if you think about it, even today, we go through battles, we go through mm -hmm. storms, we go through situations in life, right. and it might seem like all of hell is against us, but guess what? God is on our side, and you can win. You will have the victory. Mm -hmm. Let let that that patience, develop perseverance and character be developed. Don't be shaken That's by the right. battle. That's you stand right. strong in faith and see the victory. That's right. See, yeah. I could see you riding around between the troops and stirring them up. Yes. That's, That's right. right. We need that. We Just need that kind of encouragement. Song. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, coming up next, we're going to talk about someone who goes barefoot in this day and age. He goes barefoot for the gospel. You are not going to want to miss Dr. Jeff Brodsky. We'll be right back. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Call now. Do we know that in 2019, it is not going to be the same? It's not going to be like 2018. We're going to new levels. Amen. Well, whatever you're doing right now, you need to stop and really pay attention because you're going to hear some amazing things. You know, the word says that God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And Dr. Jeff Brodsky knows that all too well. He's the founder of Joy International. And in his new book, The Least of These, he explains how God called him to use his bare feet to fight against child trafficking. Dr. Jeff, welcome to Real Life. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Before we get to your bare feet, and we do want to ask you about that. Yes. You know, when the producer gave me your book, The Least of These, and I'm like, oh, a book about child trafficking, I was like, I don't think I really want to read this because, you know, we have to, we read books for the program, and I'm like, boy, it's so, it's such a serious subject, such, such heart-wrenching subject, but yet I need to read it, and I need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. It's like the three monkeys, uh, see no evil, speak no evil, hear right. no evil. It's with too many people in our world today. They don't want to see it. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to talk about it. It's so evil, so dirty, so heinous that people just turn a blind eye to it. But Tom, if it was their child, mm -hmm. their eyes would be opened right. and they would do anything they could to help set their child free. Well, the number one question I'm asked by so many people around the world is, why are you so obsessed with this? It's not your child. Mm -hmm. It's not my child. This is what's wrong in Christianity. It doesn't matter if it's my child. Every child is God's child. Jeremiah 1.5, before you were in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I created you. Um, I don't know if you have children. I have children. Yes. My yes. wife and I did not create our children. You and your wife did not create your children. Mm -hmm. You're the tools. We're the tools that God uses to bring life in the world. If we could understand that one principle then we could learn to do what Jesus instructed us to do when he said, love one another. Um, if we could understand that, then we would all be um, zealous in our fight against child trafficking 
because every child that's being abused would be just like it's our own child. And that's how I see each one of them. Um, well, I'll do well, anything me, to set one free. Let me ask you about the problem. So tell, tell us just a little bit about, so some people, I think everyone's probably familiar to some point, but maybe not as familiar as we should be. What is going on and what is it that you're fighting against? People have no idea the depths of depravity that are in our world today. For many years, uh, I used to go undercover. Uh, I stopped going undercover. I can't really say that anymore because I was undercover just uh, about two months ago in a country in uh, Central America. I can't say the country because the investigations are ongoing. But for years after I went barefoot, I couldn't go undercover. When I went undercover, and when I say undercover, I went into brothels uh, mm -hmm. searching for the youngest children I could find. Um, I personally saw children in brothels. And when I say children, I'm talking about children as young as four years old being used and abused by the most evil men on earth in the most heinous way imaginable. Um, there is no worse crime perpetrated against a child in our world today since the dawn of creation. N nobody can convince me of it. These children have to service. I don't have to paint a picture of what that word means for the listening uh, the viewing audience. They have to service anywhere from 10, 15, even up to 20 men a day, every day, uh, until they're no longer desirable and, and they're tossed in the street like trash. Um, or they're sold to what would be called a, a lower brothel. Um, and they'll either die of exposure, disease, kill themselves be, because they feel like they have no other option. Um, how do we as a society allow this to happen in our world? Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at the wars that we fight all over the world, why isn't there a war in every country, in every society on earth to fight this evil against our children? It's something that baffles me. I, I don't understand why there is not a greater war against uh, child and teen uh, trafficking of any, it doesn't matter what age they are, but, uh, and when I say trafficking, they are trafficked for commercial sexual exploitation. Um, it's slavery. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unquestionably modern. child sexual slavery. That's exactly what it is. In plain terms, that's what it is. Well, let's talk about Joy International. First, let me, let me ask you, why do you go barefoot? What, what has God done with you that he, well, I'll let you tell the story. Well, when people ask me, why are you barefoot? I tell them one word, obedience. Because I believe on July 19th, 2010, when I was in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, God asked me to. When God asks you to do something, you have two choices. It's either yes or no. There's no maybe. Maybe to me should be taken out of the dictionary. It's a non-word. It's no until it turns to a yes. When God asked me to do this, there was no question. I know God's voice because I talk to him all the time. When you do the work that I do, you have to. Um, I have to know when God is speaking to me uh, because of the dangers involved. When we go undercover, we're risking our lives. When my teams go undercover, they are unquestionably risking their lives. Um, but on July 19, 2010, I was at a garbage dump in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. We were doing a feeding program along with Joyce Meyer Ministries. Right. So we were working with her team there. And we were feeding children that live in the dump. They live in the dump because that's where the fresh food is. Trucks come, dump the fresh food to them, and they converge on it. Maybe right. they get a half-eaten banana or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, as I was standing there watching the children, I remember they were to my left, and I'm watching them, and there were about a dozen or so they are sitting there. They had a bowl of rice with chicken in it, and I noticed they were all barefoot. Now, this, it, you can't understand what, what I saw. <laughs> We were in a garbage dump, mm -hmm. the sludge and the smell. Well, anyway, when I saw them, they're all barefoot. A, a couple of them had old uh, torn up uh, flip-flops. When I went to my hotel room that night, I took off my shoes and socks and I felt that God was impressing me to go barefoot in solidarity with those children for one year. And I thought, wait a minute, God, I, I live at 9,000 feet elevation in the mountains of Colorado. When I left my house yesterday, there was snow on the ground. I thought, what would I do in the winter? And I felt God was uh, 
showing me that as long as I'm not stupid and that I would take uh, my precautions that he would take care of me. When I came home, of course, everybody thought I was out of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but when God tells you to do something, you have to be obedient Sometimes, or not. Sometimes uh, what God told the prophets to do in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. they thought they were out of their mind as well. Well, so I, d I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Well, I, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. People right. can read the whole story in the book. But on July 19, 2011, Tom, this was the happiest man on earth. I couldn't believe I, I went barefoot for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And as of today, it's been 3,065 days, wow. over eight years. Um, I haven't even had a sock on my feet. Well, uh, that morning, July 19, 2011, I'm up between 2.30 and 3.30 every day. I had a pair of socks on my couch. I got up. I, it was about 2.30 in the morning. I took the sock. I had my left foot, put it on the ottoman. I was ready. I put the sock on my toes, was ready to put them on my feet. This is what happened. Uh, I, I went to pull them on my foot, and it was as if, I don't know if God sent an angel or what, but it was like <laughs> there was an unseen force pulling the other way, and uh, I, I couldn't get them past my toes. And, and I cried out. I said, God, what, what do you want from me? I just went for a whole year. And, and that still small voice spoke to me in a way that only the Holy Spirit can. And these are the words that I heard. Mm -hmm. Keep going. <laughs> the, those children are still out there. <laughs> that was enough for me. He didn't have to repeat it. Mm -hmm. When my wife woke up, my poor wife, imagine being married to a lunatic. But <laughs> she woke up and she came out. She looked. She said, oh, I'm surprised. I thought you would have the socks on. I know you wanted them on so bad. And I said, hon, I tried. And she said, what do you mean you tried? So I told her what happened. She said, what are you going to do? I said, hon, I have to keep going. She said, for how long? I said, until one of three things happen. God speaks to me and tells me it's time. The last child is rescued mm -hmm. or I'm dead. I said, as long as my going barefoot will motivate even one person a year to action in a way that would help us to rescue even one more child a year, I'll go barefoot for the rest of my life. And it's and not. And it's not because you love going barefoot. It's I not. hate being barefoot. <laughs> People think being. that I enjoy being barefoot. I hate being barefoot. Uh, some of the some of the dirty looks, the the the, the snide remarks from people. Uh, sometimes it's very painful walking. Last week I was in Alaska, uh, walking in the snow, walking on the hot pavement, stepping on a sharp rock that you that you missed. Um, but when I have pain. It's interesting, my grandson, he saw me in pain my first year and said, Papa, why don't you just put on a pair of socks? It's the same thing, a pair of socks, and it's the same thing as any time I have pain with my feet. It reminds me, and this is what I shared with my grandson Isaac, um, it reminds me of the pain that these girls suffer 10 to 15 times a day while they're being ravaged. My pain from my feet will go away within a few minutes, an hour, even a day. Right. Their pain remains with them until someone sets them free. So any pain that I have, any time that I go through pain, it reminds me of what I'm called to do in the rescue of these girls and setting them free from the pain that they suffer every day. Well, Jeff, we, we want to talk to you. We're going to talk to you a little bit later as well. I thank you for sharing your heart. And, and we can see that your heart is, uh, is stirred up with what God has, has, has given you to do and what God has spoken to you. And, and folks, we're gonna be back with Jeff in just a little bit. We're gonna to talk to him more about some of the success stories of, of girls that have been rescued and also what we can do. It's not, this isn't just a program to entertain us. What can we do? What can you do right now to make a difference in one of these, uh, these sex slaves' lives? How can you help in rescuing someone? And we're also gonna talk about what God, when God spoke so directly to Jeff's heart. There's some good stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Right now, let's go to God in the headlines.
A church in the Netherlands is holding a worship marathon to protect a migrant family. Bethel Church in Hog has been trying to stop the deportation of an Armenian family. The ministry is taking advantage of a Dutch law, which prevents authorities from conducting operations where a service is being held. The church's strategy is to shelter the immigrant family and make sure there's always worship in the sanctuary. Hundreds of ministry leaders from across the country have offered to participate in the service. The church says they're holding out hope that the government will reverse its decision to deport the family. And Prince Charles called for peace in the Middle East after a service for persecuted Christians. The Prince of Wales delivered his own personal reflection on the crisis at Westminster Abbey in London. He urged an end to extremism in the region and talked about the importance of Christians staying in that part of the world where Christianity was founded. The plight of persecuted Christian is a cause that's been on his heart recently. He's met with refugees and hosted them at his homes in London and Scotland. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on purpose. Guys, I, I just can't get the, the, the recent interview we just right. did with, with Jeff out of my mind. Uh, the, um, you know, we want to pray into the news, but I want to pray into that as well. That, that's affecting, very right. affecting to, to hear about these girls that are, are what they're going through mm -hmm. and to know that he is making a difference. Right. Children, children being trafficked. There's just really no words um, to say about that. It, it's... Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking, and, and I, I, I just think it's interesting, his obedience to follow God, to be barefoot, because that's something in a society that's going to stand out. Mm -hmm. In the Western culture, we all wear shoes and socks, and we're all fully clothed and well taken care of. And when you see a gentleman with no shoes on walking around, you, you want to know a story, and how long have you been doing this? And then all of a sudden, that picture and that story can't leave your heart and your mind. And we don't need to just feel empathy about it, but we need to somehow be moved to compassion, mm -hmm. to pray, to give, to go, to help, and to do whatever we can to help end modern day slavery. I love Absolutely. how he's just walking that out. He loved Jesus first, and then he's loving others, and then himself last, because mm -hmm. that's uncomfortable. But you know what, this whole thing with the children, it is persecution against children. They don't have a voice. And unless we are willing to be a voice for them, I mean, even in our own church bodies, may we wake up to what is happening around us mm -hmm. and be active in the community. We just can't talk about it and just pray. We need to go. We that's, need to do. That's right. And in, in his book, he talks about how this is happening in America as well, not yeah. just in Asian nations. Mm -hmm. Amy, could you just lead us in prayer? And we'll all pray, but could you just start yeah. us off? Yes. Amy's. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I just, I pray for the kids right now that are caught in the sex trafficking industry. Father, I pray right now that even one be released, yes, two Lord. be released today, that something happens in the, the organization that gets all messed up. And I thank you, Father, that you bring to justice those that are coming causing great harm to the children. Father, I ask for your hand to be on the children of the world, that you keep them, Father, in Cambodia, even in the United States, wherever it's happening, Father, we pray that somehow this evil comes yes. to an end. And Father, we ask that you use us to help end it. In Jesus' name, we pray. And Father, I just pray for awakening of the body of Christ, that we will not be asleep, that we will begin to be active for your kingdom and your glory. Father, I just thank you right now, even for the people heading up these evil corporations, God, that you will send labors to yes. them. Father, you want them saved. You want them to turn around. So I'm going to pray for their lives right now, Father God, that you can do the impossible thing and shed your light even on their lives yes. in the Jesus. Jesus name hallelujah father we just believe that you want to do miracles in the lives of everyone who's watching to do a miracle in the lives of every one of these girls Lord I like what Jeff said father until the last one is yes. rescued and we believe you for that now in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name well we're gonna be back with more with Dr. Jeff uh, Brodsky, Amanda and I will be here to talk more about what is being done and the good stories about what's happening and what you can do to be involved right after this.
Since 1979, Cornerstone Television Network has captured blessings happening in the Berg and brought them to life in your home. Through the power of media, our ministry continues to grow, joining with local churches and answering thousands of prayer calls annually. Join us as we continue to build our community while impacting yours. Follow Cornerstone Television Network on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or check out our website, www.ctvn.org. Cornerstone, real answers for real life. Welcome back to Real Life. We're back with Dr. Jeff Brodsky, who's just sharing with us his uh, ministry to the sex traffic girls around the world. I just want to ask you this question because <laughs> you're a pretty normal guy yeah. and you have a testimony. So if you could tell us, because I love people to know that God can use anybody to do the miraculous. Mm -hmm. So share, please. Well. Uh, as far as me being uh, anything, I'm not anything special. People think that I'm special because of this barefoot thing. I'm just, a, like you said, I'm just a regular guy that God asked to do something and I said yes. It's just like anybody else in the scriptures. When you read the scriptures, you ask people to do things and it's a matter of being obedient. Um, and that's what I believe. When God asks us to do something, it's yes or no, like I was sharing before. Um, if God is asking someone that's, lit, that's uh, watching right now, uh, you have to, I think first what you have to do is learn to be sensitive to God's voice. You have to know when God's talking to you, uh, the difference between him and the enemy. I have learned to distinguish when it's, when it's God and the enemy. Um, and I think that when you uh, know that God is speaking to you, whatever, whatever he's asking you to do, even something ludicrous like living barefoot in modern society, um, you have to make that decision. And I, I decided to listen. Yeah. And yeah. as a result, it, you know, when I, when I first started going barefoot, it wasn't to raise funds. It was simply to make people aware of the plight of trafficked children. I had no thought that it would ever be used as a fundraiser. And then it was, a, it was into my second year, I spoke to a youth group in a small town in Ohio. And about a few days after I spoke there, their youth pastor contacted me and said, Dr. Jeff, you really touched the hearts of these young people. They want to do something to help. Rescue operations are incredibly expensive, thousands and thousands of dollars just for one rescue. And the, he, she said that they want to do something to help you raise funds. They want to walk a mile barefoot in solidarity with you. I thought, oh boy, what a neat idea. Well, they raised $13,000. I went, oh my, maybe wow. there's something to this where it could be used as a tool to bring in funds to rescue more children. Well, as a result, there's been well over a thousand rescues as a result of the barefoot miles. They're happening all across America now with invitations literally in other parts of the world. Strictly to help bring in funds to raise more girls, um, to rescue um, more girls wherever it may be. So, and again, it wasn't uh, my intention. So, so let's yeah. ask you about that. Okay. Um, uh, can you share one story, one particular story about a girl that's been rescued? Sure, right here, Toha. Uh, this, you can see this number. I don't know if the camera can get on this. Uh, it's uh, um, the number 22. Um, this number 22 has a lot of symbolism. Uh, there's, uh, there's a reason why this was uh, made. Uh, it was in Cambodia uh, with an organization that we partner with. We partner with a lot of different organizations. People that are in this fight must be willing to partner and work together and join forces. There can't be any jealousy, envy, fear. We must, we're fighting organized crime and we must be organized. But this is the story of Toha. Toha is now 19 or 20 years old. When Toha was 14 years old, she was sold to a brothel by her parents. Um, and yes, that happens even today, uh, even here in America. And it took the team, uh, our, uh, my, I have a director of global police training and tactical operations. He trains police teams. Um, one police training will cost Joint International 12 to $15,000. Is it worth it? The police teams that we trained, um, it took one of them 22 days 
to find Toha. Um, in those 22 days, Toha had to service, I don't have to paint a picture what that means, she had to service 198 men in that 22-day period. She's now safe. I showed you a photo of her before. Beautiful young girl. Um, Toha even made this bracelet. Wow. Um, The 22 reminds me of how every second counts, every moment matters, um, every day. Uh, it's so important because there's another girl several years ago uh, whose funeral we attended. Um, she was also sold when she was 14, but when she was 19, uh, she died of AIDS. What if she was rescued one person one day before the person who gave her AIDS? Every second counts. It's the, why I'm, it's the reason I'm sitting here on this couch, to hopefully motivate one person. If I'm here and one person that's watching, one, will be motivated to action in a way that could help us rescue even one more girl, it's worth me flying from Colorado to here, mm -hmm. to the studios, to do this. Um, when I leave here today, I'll be flying to Toronto to do the same thing. I'll go anywhere in the world, even if it's for 30 minutes uh, for an interview that can hopefully motivate one person to action to help us rescue another girl. Would you want us to do it if it was your child? Of course you would. Well, like I shared before, Every child is God's child. We have to do whatever we can to set another one free. Mm -hmm. this is I love how you feel for the one, like God has given you a gift. And you talk in your book about this seven seconds that he gave you, that caused you, motivated you, compelled you forward. Thank you, God. I believe the Lord wants to do that for people so that we can feel. I don't like to talk about the seven seconds yeah. because when, when I do, it brings back to m my memory what happened uh, during those seven seconds. <clears throat> I woke up uh, one night. I was an emotional basket case, much worse than this, and woke up my wife, and she said, what's wrong? And I said, I said, Anna, I can't talk. I, I just have to go pray. And I, I went into another room and started praying. And when Gail, my wife, woke up, she said, what happened? I said, I, I don't know if it was real or a dream, <clears throat> but for about seven seconds, God gave me the emotion of what one of these children feel while they're being ravaged. I said, my life as we know it is over. As long as I know there's a child out there experiencing in much worse, much worse than what I felt for those seven seconds, I will devote the rest of my life to setting as many free as I can. You know, it's interesting as Christians, we pray for so many gifts, gift of healing, miracles. I have pleaded with God to give me one gift that I could take this finger and touch someone like Tom and let him feel for those seven seconds what I felt. And then people would know why I'm so obsessed with uh, fighting this uh, evil. Um, I think uh, women can understand much better than men. Why God did that to me, I don't know. Um, all I know is what I experienced during that time. And it's one of the motivating forces with me. It's rare, this is one of the first times I've shared it uh, publicly like this. I, did, I even struggled with putting it in my book because I thought, people are gonna think I'm a lunatic. They're not gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter so to me. It reminds me of Jesus yeah. because he exactly. felt, he felt. Yeah all the sin of the world on his body. He sweat blood mm -hmm. in Gethsemane. That's true. Well, I never I thought of that. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're going to ask you to join us for prayer uh, towards the end of the program, uh, Jeff. Sure. And, and we'll also we'll want to talk then about how people can be directly involved, how people can sure. be involved in a way that will make a difference uh, because we, we love that you're sharing God's heart for these girls and we want to continue that. So thank you so much for sharing. Right now we're gonna to throw to Amy. Well, the, the heart and the compassion that Jeff has, I believe came straight from the Heavenly Father. If you think about the Christmas song, what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? We're talking about children being trafficked, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping this 
This is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. And in the very last verse, it says, the King of Kings, salvation brings. Did you know that Jesus was 100% God and 100% man? That he actually came as a babe, not just to, just to live a, a normal life, but to be the savior of the world. Jesus was actually moved. He knew that this was going to happen to those children at that time. And he said, I want to be their savior. I want to save you from an eternal death. And so here's what we get. Every second counts. Every moment matters. This is your time. This is your second. This is your moment to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be the savior of your life. What child is this? The, this babe the son of Mary. Will you ask him to come into your heart and be the Lord and the Savior of your life? It's so easy. Just say, Father God, forgive me of my sins. I repent and I ask you to come into my heart to be the Lord, the Savior of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, will you give us a call at 888-665-4483. I'm deeply moved by this program, and I pray that you are also moved. All right, so we still have our good friend, Katie Farrell. Let's head over to the Real Life Kitchen to see what she is cooking on Dashing Dish. Hi, I'm Katie with Dashing Dish, and at Dashing Dish, I'm all about teaching you how to create healthy alternatives to the food you crave. So today, I'm going to teach you some of my favorite ways to make entertaining, healthy, but still delicious and fun and a crowd pleaser, because ultimately that's what's most important. So I don't know about you, but sometimes when I go to parties, I almost dread what's going to be served as far as food goes. You know, you look at the table and you think, oh my gosh, it's all these fried food and just cheeses and crackers. What am I actually going to eat and, you know, feel good after I've left this party? So a great way to handle that is to bring a dish to pass along. And this is one of my favorite tips is just to bring a healthy dish that everybody will love. So today I'm gonna show you how to make deviled eggs because whether it's the holidays or a party or really any type of gathering you're going to, I find that deviled eggs are always a hit. So here we have just some hard boiled eggs and a really good tip on hard boiling your eggs and then peeling them easily because let's face it, that's usually the hardest part is you boil them in a pot of water for about eight to 10 minutes until they're completely hard boiled and then you just dump them directly into a bowl with ice water in it. And that just allows the eggs to peel right off. I mean, they slide off, it's so easy. So we hard boiled some eggs and we have six eggs total here for this recipe, but you could always double it. And I just cut um, half of them just directly in half lengthwise. And I disposed of the yolks. I just saved them in the fridge for later and you can you know, mix them up for an egg salad later. But we take out those egg yolks because that cuts even the calories in half. So we're gonna use the egg yolks in these eggs. And all I do is I'm just cutting them in half lengthwise. And we are going to use these, like I said, because you do need a little bit of yolk in the filling. I think that makes it a little bit um, more rich and it also just helps them taste like traditional, you know, deviled eggs. So here is the yolks that we're gonna use and we'll just put these into a medium sized bowl. And you wanna be a little bit, you know, careful, a little bit gentle with this just to make sure you don't break the egg white because you're gonna refill these egg whites. And if you don't get it cleaned out perfectly, that's okay. Usually they typically just kind of pop right out, but I'm doing this a little bit quick today, so we're not gonna worry about it being perfect because we will fill them back up, so you won't even notice. So we have the egg uh, yolks in the bowl, and again, we just have three of the egg yolks, and then a little tip to kind of replace that creamy texture from the egg yolks that we you know, saved for later is just some hummus. 
So we have hummus here, and you can use any kind of hummus. This is just traditional classic hummus. And we're gonna do six tablespoons, which really is just a fourth cup, if you were to measure it, a fourth cup and two tablespoons. But I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it for six tablespoons here. And it's not baking, so it doesn't have to be perfect. With baking, you wanna do an exact science, but with cooking, you can kind of eyeball it according to your taste. So you're gonna uh, kind of stir that together and you can see how creamy that gets. So what um, replacing the egg yolks does is with the hummus is it adds that creaminess, like I said, back to the filling and no one will even know what's in there. And it also adds a little bit of protein and fiber. So it makes it a little bit better for you. And then Greek yogurt is gonna be the next secret ingredient for this. So Greek yogurt is basically just um, yogurt that's really high in protein. And even if you don't like the taste of Greek yogurt, you won't even know it's in here. Really, this replaces mayonnaise that's in a traditional deviled egg recipe. And this just calls for three tablespoons of Greek yogurt. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball that as well. And then I'm just gonna do a pinch of salt and pepper and really you could add any kind of seasonings you want. Um, we have onion powder here, you could do garlic powder, you could do any kind of seasonings to kind of make this your own. You could even do, I know for hummus there's um, like jalapeno hummus, there's sun-dried tomato hummus, so you could add any kind of hummus. And you'll see once this is all stirred together, it looks just like a traditional deviled egg filling. So you, again, you wouldn't even know that these are a little bit on the healthier side. And it's really um, cutting the calories in half. So no one would know, and you know that you're bringing a healthy dish to pass. So you can feel good about serving it and also eating it. And then to make these really pretty, because that's really the important part when it comes to deviled eggs, is I take a Ziploc bag and I kind of stick my hand in there, and then I fit, put the filling, and you can do this with any frosting or anything that you're I'm trying to you know, pipe on that to make it look pretty and easy. I put the filling directly into the Ziploc bag, like this, kinda on my hand. And then I turn it inside out, and then squeeze it down into one of the corners. And again, you can do this with anything that you're trying to pipe, and you have your own piping bag. And then I'm gonna just cut the tip off of that corner and then we're gonna fill some of these egg whites and see how pretty that looks. And you could even do, um, the piping bags sometimes come with like a metal tip, so you could have like a pretty design. So you could put the metal tip right in the corner of that um, Ziploc bag there and you can see how beautiful. So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill the rest of these. It takes just a second and see it has that nice creamy yellow color to it. And then um, I would continue on and just finish the rest of these. And you can see that the finished product is plated up right here on this plate. And look how beautiful they look just on a nice serving dish. And then you could add some dried chives or maybe some crisp bacon on top so that when you bring them to the party, everyone says, wow, those look good. And again, this is just an optional topping. But look how good those look. And again, healthy alternative to the food you crave. So everybody loves deviled eggs. It's a healthier alternative. And I can guarantee this will be sure to please a crowd. So to get this recipe and more, uh, head over to ctvn.org. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Well, I'm not the hugest deviled eggs fan, but they look pretty good. But I don't know, you know, uh, Katie, if you can get me to eat those deviled eggs. It's... I just like the word skinny before it. <laughs> skinny, blank, blank, anything that says skinny first, I, I'm in. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, we're here. We're going to pray for your uh, needs, pray for the needs that have been called in. We're also here with uh, Dr. Jeff Brodsky talking a little bit further about what we can do. So, Jeff, just listening to your interviews and your story and, you know, I, you, you can't help but to be deeply moved. How can I move towards action? What can I do? Well, people used to ask me uh, in the beginning, can I go with you? Can I go undercover? It, you have to be highly trained mm -hmm. uh, to go undercover. 
Uh, now uh, we don't allow any civilians to go undercover anymore. Uh, we, use, we work strictly with the police. We've learned through the years how to do it the right way. When the police go in, they could do a rescue and an arrest immediately. When we do a rescue now, someone's going to jail because yes. an arrest is done immediately. Yes. But the best thing that people could do is to help us with funding. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredible, give you an example. One of our police trainings, which I'll be doing another one in three weeks with our team, mm -hmm. cost us between twelve to $15,000. We did five last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Airport trainings, where we go in and train anybody in the airport. I don't care if it's TSA agent or if it's someone that pushes a wheelchair, works in a restaurant, works behind uh, the counter as a clerk uh, with rental cars. We train everybody in the airport to recognize when children or teens are being trafficked in the airport. Mm -hmm. That has resulted in tremendous um, rescues already. Um, so these are expensive. So that's the best thing people could do. Uh, they can also write to their legislators. Um, they can make people aware uh, in schools. There's different things that people could do, but funding is a big part of it. My challenge here would be, uh, whether it be to uh, viewers or to even you. I know that you're a pastor uh, with your church. I would challenge you to help put together our first barefoot mile right here in, Pitt in the Pittsburgh area. I was thinking that yeah. same thing. I would love to have yes. one here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're having one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania yeah. uh, this uh, spring. Yeah. But uh, those are some of the things that people could do. They can get online. Uh, our website is real simple. Yeah. My organization, Joy International, uh, joy.org. Uh, they can get online, and there's uh, areas there they could see what can you do. Um, and we'll so there are that, things we'll that you can do. We'll have that on our on our website, Joy International. Go to ctvn.org, and you'll also have a link to Joy International. Also, uh, the information about how to get the the book as well. Um, right now, we want to pray. We've had. Uh, uh, we always have people calling in, and I'm glad we do. I'm glad you call in and, and, and that we can help to touch your life. And I'm gonna just ask Amanda if, if you would just lay hands and, and, and pray. Uh, Before I do that, can I ask how many children have been set free? Since we started doing this, there's somewhere between two to 3,000 that have been rescued. Amazing. Thank yeah. you, Lord. We over have three, Over rejoice. 300 last year, uh, yeah. just in Cambodia. Over 300 last year with the teams that, that we've trained. Amazing. Thank you. Just about you. a minute left, so Hallelujah. let's let's. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we look to you. We rejoice right now for every one of those children who have been set free, Father God, for you so long to set the captive free. And Lord, I thank you that your anointing goes through our, our friend here. And Lord, you continue to set these captives free. Yes. And Lord, for those who have called in and they are bound in any way, whether it's with sickness, disease, Father, or if they're in their own mental prison, Father God, you know every need on every page. And we declare the year of the Lord, liberty in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father thank God. You. We thank you that you've called each one. And Lord, I do ask that you awaken us and Father, put passion within us. Let us feel what someone else feels so that we can be moved into action to be the change that we yes, are Lord. so looking for. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jeff, thank you so much for being with thank us. You, guys, thank you. Guys, wonderful program. And we want to leave you with the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.